my name is Takbir Fatima. I'm an architect based in Hyderabad. Uh, I've done my BR from CSIIT in Sikandrabad, and I did my master's from uh, the Architectural Association Design Research Lab in London. Uh, I came back uh, to Hyderabad because I wanted to do some work that was kind of socially relevant, and there are more opportunities to do this kind of work here. Um, I started Design Aware with an aim to create awareness through livable, wearable, usable and accessible design because I believe good design should be accessible to all and not become a forte of, of a limited few. Uh, we were asked to design a charity school for children of disadvantaged backgrounds in the heart of the Golconda Fort. So the building had to be very low budget uh, and that was pretty much the, the brief. The fort is in probably the most, uh, the oldest part of the city of Hyderabad. It's more than 800 years old. Uh, and also the, the context is such that the fort is located on a hilltop and there are uh, these millions of years old rock formations which are indigenous to the Deccan Plateau. Uh, and so the entire site is very highly contoured and the terrain is very, um, very difficult. And there is this uh, hundreds of years old settlement, which is within the, the outer walls of the Golconda Fort area. Uh, these low rise, high density um, courtyard houses, which all share walls. This is our site, which is, um, as you can see, it's highly contoured. There was an existing retaining wall, which kind of formed this um, box of soil uh, which was filled up to create a, a flat ground and uh, there was an existing mosque on the site and an existing um, large kind of like a warehouse shed which had uh, partitions in it uh, for the you know for the classroom so it was like a makeshift uh, school that was being run there so the site itself is divided into three parts the higher part of the site which is raised the lower part of the site is this where you have these um, existing courtyard houses. So you have kind of a row of these courtyard houses which are um, continuing this way. And they're all, uh, they all pretty much share the same um, sort of uh, proportions. And within them you have, you know, uh, you have these built spaces which are, uh, and open spaces which are courtyards. One of the courtyard houses is our, uh, part of our site. So that's like the lowest level. So if you call this zero feet, then this would be at 20 plus 20 feet. So if you have a main road here, you have this road that is running. So you have one access from here, and then this road sort of winds and it goes around and it goes behind and you can access the, the school from there. And uh, north is on this side. So the site is divided into three parts. One is this narrow access from the road, which is the courtyard house. Uh, and then you have this central part of the site, which is highly contoured, uh, which kind of forms almost like a wall of rock that is dividing the two uh, upper and lower parts of the site. So as you can see, it's very, very highly contoured. And all of this is not soil. It's all sheet rock. And it continues for kilometers all you know, uh, throughout the fort area. And uh, this entire thing is almost like a cliff. So because we had this access to the street, which was the courtyard house, we wanted to you know, continue this um, as a central corridor or a central circulation space um, and also gathering space and a connection between um, all parts of the school. Uh, so the reason for creating this was also uh, because our building needed to seamlessly connect all the levels to one another and uh, and kind of merge into the into the terrain that was existing so our idea was to create the central zone which uh, which would be flanked by classrooms on either end so you would have uh, two classrooms on either end but once we started excavating um, we just we just hit the sheet rock so we uh, it's very different from different uh, different from uh, other de design processes in which um, you do the design first and then you go onto the site and you execute that. But uh, in our process, we had to sort of intersperse the design process along with the uh, with construction. 
So we had to uh, design as we were constructing on site, responding to the conditions on the site. So we had to, uh, once we started constructing uh, this part, we, were, we built one classroom on each side and then we hit the rock. So there was rock here and uh, so we couldn't go further. So we had to eliminate two more classrooms which are supposed to be coming here and the rock sort of entered the classroom. This is how the rock kind of, you know, uh, forms one face of one of the walls of the classroom and then it continues this way and uh, goes into the other classroom. So this is how the rock sort of uh, forms a wall that uh, ends this, this classroom. On top of that, we were able to stack one more layer where uh, at this point we, were, we didn't have the rock so uh, we were able to go further and we were able to have two, two rooms on either side. And uh, so this building is more experiential in that you experience it from the inside out. You don't see it from, from outside and then you go in. From the outside all you see is this narrow area and from the other side you see uh, the open area. Uh, so because we had this retaining wall, we, um, we knew that there was soil under this. The rest of it was rock but we knew that there was soil under this. So we started excavating that and we were able to get two more classrooms uh, in this area. So we were able to, uh, on the first floor, we were able to get two more classrooms. So uh, the building, we don't call it ground floor, first floor and second floor, but we call it lower ground, middle ground and upper ground. And another thing that we wanted to really preserve in this, um, in this design uh, with this building was that there, are, uh, there were trees all over. So we had uh, trees, you know, in different parts of the site. So we had trees um, which were already existing and the children were quite used to sort of learning under these trees and uh, we didn't want to touch these trees and we didn't want to touch this open space which was their playground. So the entire building is concentrated on the rocky area here. This is how the courtyard houses are sort of lined up along the street and the street is very, very steep and it winds around and it sort of goes this way and um, goes up the hill. So on this side there was um, an existing mosque and there was another a building here which was like a warehouse. So this road uh, gives you one access from the top and one access from the bottom. And this is the courtyard house that we demolished. So these are the three parts of our site, the courtyard, the contoured area with the cliff and the upper filled part with the existing school and the mosque and, um, and this way is north. So when you stand up here you can see the entire uh, Golconda fort around you and the city below. This was a very narrow space so we, we created this kind of square of 18 by 18. You would see this staircase that leads you till um, till the first floor, which is the middle ground. So this is the staircase, and uh, this space is actually a double height space that is formed here. Because you have shared walls on either side, you're sharing walls with the, with the courtyard houses on either of the, of the sides. We had to get ventilation in either from the street or from the top, and uh, that's how we created this uh, central cutout, which would bring in sunlight and fresh air from above. So we created this, as I mentioned before, the central corridor. So in either end we have um, sort of uh, these toilets. And our aim was to have classrooms on either side. But on this floor, which is the lower ground floor, we could only have classrooms on uh, two classrooms. So we couldn't have four classrooms as we had decided because suddenly we have rock coming into the site into the school, into the classroom. So the rock forms uh, part of the wall, uh, one of the walls in this classroom and also in this classroom. And then you have this, uh, we wanted to retain a sort of green space. So we have uh, this tree outside which is already existing and we've planted a, another tree here and we've created um, a central kind of atrium here 
so you have this cut out here and you have the staircase continuing to the top so when you're standing here you can see all the other floors above and when you're when you're entering you would see this red staircase which goes all the way connecting all the floors we knew that there was soil under the retaining uh, inside the retaining wall so we brought down this retaining wall and we claimed the two classrooms that we have lost on the uh, lower ground we reclaimed those classrooms here and we were able to get more classrooms on the middle ground so here we have two and then um, uh, we were able to get a nice space here um, which we turned into the computer lab in this area what we did was we created the staff room so uh, the staff room is connected with the rest of the building so you've got uh, two parts of the building which are kind of disconnected from one another. So what better way to connect these two is uh, better than a bridge. So we used a bridge to connect both of these parts. So you have the staircase coming from below which is a bright red staircase that connects all parts of the building and then it goes up as well um, with these cutouts in between. So you have two kind of atriums that are uh, bringing in fresh air and light from above and you can see the tree and the rock from above when you stand in the corridor. It was pretty much a typical plan which kept growing and shrinking in response to the rock that's existing on the site. This space uh, was being wasted only because it was highly contoured with these um, rocks coming into the space. It made this space stepped. So we created this step seating here uh, which would be an informal seating area and there's rock underneath which is getting covered up by these steps and it's uh, and this became the library. We also ran this uh, social media campaign called Make Progress Possible to collect um, used books from people who were willing to donate them, used children's books for the school library. And this library is something which they would just play around on the steps uh, and they would, they would have fun while reading. So finally we've reached the upper ground level and as I mentioned before we didn't want to disturb the existing playground that was there. So this was the old building of the school, the mosque, and then uh, this is the open area. So this is one entrance, and this is our other entrance. So, and it's connected to the other part of the building with this bridge. And below this is the staircase below. So on this level, it's just a cutout. And you have our spine of the building which is a bright red staircase arriving uh, on this floor finally and the cutout right next to it so there's nothing else on this floor this is um, intentionally we've kept the upper level completely open so we've preserved the playground and we've created kind of raised play courts in this area you see the city below you see uh, the Qutub Shahi tombs on this side, uh, Lanko Hills uh, far in the distance, and the Golconda Fort all around you. So we wanted to respect the proportion of the existing courtyard houses, and so we created a very narrow uh, sort of entrance. The street character is very uh, sort of jazzy and very bright in terms of color, which is very typical to you know Indian neighborhoods. We wanted this to be uh, the school to negate that color palette and sort of uh, not stand out but kind of differentiate itself from the neighboring houses. So it's completely uh, blank in its facade. But we also looked at the color palette and we picked really bright colors from the, from the surrounds. So we picked uh, primary colors as well as orange and we uh, applied them in a very controlled manner throughout the school uh, in the gates, the doors, windows, railings staircase uh, so everything else is kind of concrete and uh, these uh, spaces or these elements are really brightly colored so you have uh, one entrance from below uh, with you know from where the courtyard house used to be and you have one entrance from above and this is the road that sort of uh, goes around and connects both the entrances staircase the red staircase which forms the central spine of the entire school which is the which is the central part of the school and it continues and connects all the levels which is in bright red and the really bright 
uh, yellow geometric sort of skylight. So on top you have uh, no built space except for these two proposed classrooms and just this entrance um, which is covered by a skylight so it's completely open and on one side you have this perforated um, uh, lightweight concrete block wall which brings in uh, wind and air from the north and you and this part becomes uh, so the terrace of, of the school becomes the uh, play court area as well as the stage for assembly and the entire focus is on the playground on this level so there's nothing else that's built but just the just the playground the play courts and the assembly area the existing school uh, that was there before has also been painted and converted into a, a kindergarten to mimic the rest of the uh, color palette of the school when you're entering from the bottom or you're entering from the top there's two different ways of experiencing the school and uh, each time you'll have a surprise so if you're entering from the bottom uh, and you're traveling up you go up and then you see this open space so you enter from a narrow kind of uh, built space when you're entering from the top from the top as i said there's nothing built so you would just see a kind of roof which is a skylight and then you go down and as you go down the building kind of opens itself up to you so you see more and more of built space below so either way there's a surprise a building can be like a story which is unfolding as you go through it so you're going through the building and you discover you know serendipitously discover little things along the way uh, and that completes the the entire learning as you travel through the building